In this video, what I want to do is show you how I created an org, a Bible inside of org mode and all the cool stuff I learned along the way. Um, this started off with uh, me learning about plain text files and how the, uh, there's a lot of advantages over plain text files, over rich text files. So something like a notepad file versus a Word doc file for those of you who are unfamiliar with what those even mean. And uh, I want to show you why I've done what I've done and how I did it. I learned a lot on the way. So I had this thing where I was like, I want a plain text version of the Bible I can use to not only like put my notes inside the actual text, but also a quick way I can link other notes to inside the text. And I did that using uh, uh, Emacs and a couple of packages inside it. So right now my distribution of Emacs, if you want to call it a distribution, is uh, Doom Emacs. And this is a version of Emacs that has a bunch of built-in features that are really nice that's easy to install and uninstall things with it. And so I got a package called uh, Org Rome, which I use to study the Bible. I'm going to do another video on that in the future because this video is just about how I created the Org uh, mode how I created not only a Markdown version, but an org mode version and a King James version and a web Bible version. And so all this is a link on my GitHub. And so have at it. There's really nothing else useful there other than this. So uh, I like the open source movement. I wanted to contribute somehow. And I thought, hey, maybe this is, maybe some people will find this interesting. I like it. And I think it's a great way to study uh, the Bible anyways. So let's jump in and look at my stuff. So. As you can see, I am in Doom Emacs, and now I'm in uh, Dired Mode, which is uh, allows me to look at all my files. So this is a version of the Bible called the Web Bible. It's an open source version that it uses modern language. It even uses contractions in it. A lot of Bible versions don't use contractions. This one does. But when I open up this file, you can see that it has some issues if you want to use this as a Bible to take notes with and cross-reference. This is just for reading. This is probably okay. I would change some things like uh, make it probably, I would probably use what I would, what, what's called Olivetti mode, but we, which just makes it uh, look a little nicer here. I'll show you what that looks like. It just uh, scrunches the screen or I'll make it even tighter than that, but that's fine. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna take this off for now. That's where I'm at. But I've got some problems here. Number one, um, I want something that uh, my first problem really is. Um, let me get out of here. Uh, yeah, my first problem is my file names. So these are my file names. This stuff is like technical stuff so you don't really mess with unless you really know what you're doing. These are just the file names right here. And the problem is this, number one, it has, each one of these has, you know, English version, web Bible, Protestant version, and then the the Bible, although this is really should be chapter, oh, this is the first book, so it should be one, but I don't know why they changed that. And then it has the title of the, or the abbreviation of the book, which is nice. And then it has the chapter, which is also nice, but it has read too, so I don't like that. I want it to look a little bit cleaner. And what got me down this whole path of how to do this was uh, a video by uh, Luke Smith, if you've seen his videos. He has a video that he renames all of his Cowboy Bebop files to make them nice and easy. So I was like, watch this video using uh, Vim, which this is uh, uh, evil key bindings here, which is Vim mode inside of Emacs. And I was like, all right, I, I think I can do this. And so I learned how to do this. So eventually you get really quick at this, but I'm gonna try to slow it down for you and show you what exactly I'm doing. So I could do what you would do if you're just writing a file, if you're using a regular file manager. You would double click it in the right way, not to open the file, but you would click it twice so you could uh, rename it. You'd rename it, you'd hit enter, and it would save it, and then you do that for the next one. But I've done this for 4,400 files now, you know, four different versions of the Bible. Each Bible has like uh, 1,109 chapters. So. I don't want to spend that much time doing it, and I haven't. So here's what you can do: you can get into what's called uh, this is has an edit mode, an edit mode. So in this, I could hit enter and it would open this file, but also I could press I, which gets me into insert mode, which allows me to actually edit the text of this file. So I could edit the text, and if I enter. Uh, 
capital Z, capital Z, it would save it this way. But I'm actually not going to do that. I'm going to do it a different way. What I'm going to do is uh, get out of editing mode, but I'm still in the ability to edit if I hit I again. And I can hit uh, V, which allows me to highlight. And so I can highlight and hit D to delete. But um, I wish you could just you know, highlight them all like that. And you can. Um, and the way you do this is Control V. And that allows you to not only highlight the text, but also it does a visual block. So let's just, we're going to work with Genesis right now. And just to give you the, the idea of what I'm doing here. And I don't want all this here. I want something a lot more simple. I can hit delete, uh, D and delete all of it, but I also can hit C. And C is a mode that, oops. C is a mode that allows you Oh, let me, uh, yeah, let me redo that. I don't know what happened there. I must have hit the wrong button. Anyways, uh, C is a mode that allows you to not only just delete, but delete and replace. So C, and I want to hit, uh, actually, I messed up again. So here we go. One more time. So C. Uh, zero, 01 and I just want to dash just to make it look nice and now it's gonna replace every single one of those lines and there we are now let's remove this underscore just because I don't really think I need it now I can do the last bit again control C allows me to do this uh, and I could delete uh, this section here which I, I want to but instead of having it being a text file so a plain text file owner an org file which is just uh, I can hit replace, period, O-R-G, and then save it. Now I can hit uh, control Z, control Z. Now these files are saved, which is awesome. So I can get inside here, but I still don't like the way that looks. So let's show you how I change it to make it look a little bit better. To do that, um, I'm going to use what's called Ranger, which is a terminal-based file manage manager, but you can use it inside of Emacs because Emacs, you can do almost anything inside here. Now you can see that I'm not only am I looking at uh, the file name, but I can actually see the plain text of the file inside it, which is nice if you want to be browsing for different files this way. And um, I like that a lot. So let's use what's called a macro. Now a macro, what it does is it just says whatever you just did. So you can like record a bunch of keystrokes and then it'll go, all right, execute those keystrokes again, execute those again, execute those again. And you can do that a number of times that you want to. So see, I'm going to show you how I did this. Um, in the Emacs, um, the one I used, there's several different ones. I don't know in uh, in Space Max, Space Max what I've used before or um, Doom Emacs, what all these do. But I do know that I can go to start, which is... Here it is, start uh, K macro, start macro, and that is control X, open parentheses, so I can hit this. Now it's going to record whatever I'm about to hit. All right, so let's do this in the best way possible. Hopefully I get it the right the first time. Enter, now I'm inside. Now, what I want to do is first, I want to delete this period at the end of this line. To do that, I hit control A, I'm at the end of the line. I'm also in edit mode, which is also nice. So A just gets you the next word, or next letter over, where I goes right where, right where your cursor is. A goes one letter over. Shift A goes to the end of the line you begin to edit, and that to me is really nice. I get out by pressing either Control G, Escape, or JK really fast. Not at the same time, but one right after the other. Go down a file, or go down a line. Uh, shift A again just to make sure I'm at the end of this file backspace and then get out now uh, shift I which gets me to the beginning of the file backspace and then a space all right so I've got this first section done and um, now I want to uh, go to the beginning of the file so I hit JK shift I now at the beginning and I'm using this in org mode, so to make a heading in org mode, it's just you put one asterisk in front of it. So there's my asterisk, 
and there is my file. So get out of there. So there's my file uh, name, but we want to go even further. I need some verse numbers. To do that, there's a special function. I'll just show you really quick. I found this online on a Stack Exchange, and I just copied it and put it inside my folder, and it works just fine. So let's um, use this. So go down one, and now I want to start from here. So Shift V just does the entire line. You don't have to do the entire line, but I like to do things to make sure I know what it's. I know I know it works this way. So let's go to the bottom of the file. I'm still not in edit mode. I'm just in regular mode as far as moving around with uh, J, K, L, and H. And so I want to go to the bottom of the page to do that. I can hit capital G. G, G goes to the top, but G, capital G, goes to the bottom of the page. So there we go, all the way at the bottom. And I'm going to call up a function. So here I can just hit Alt X, which brings up this section here. And I want to hit org. The files, the, yeah org make o list and there's my file thing and i hit enter and it versifies the whole thing now one last thing before we get out of here is alt x and save buffer so i'm just going to type it out because that way i know exactly what it's doing so save buffer now it is saved now let's get into uh, alt x again and get to ranger now in Ranger, all right, last thing, this is very important, don't quit, go down one file. If you don't do that, um, it's not going to work as nicely as you want it to because then you just have to run it on every single one of them. But I went down, so let's save this real quick. So uh, Control X, close parentheses. Now it says keyboard macro defined. Now it's defined. Great. So. Here's the first file, and it has exactly what we want. It's got verses, it's deleted the periods, it's made it the uh, the heading all on one line. I want to do that with this file. So I hit uh, meta x or space colon, which is what it does in Doom, or space space and space max, and I hit uh, k macro. Uh, I believe it's call, yeah, call. So for some reason, there's not a key binding to this. I could just add one in if I wanted to, but I'll do it this way, and I just hit Enter. And it did it. All right. Now, see, there we go. Now it's done it there on Chapter 2 as well. All right. Um, and see how it ends on the second one. So you could just keep doing If you wanted to, you could keep going like this. Um, and then you can go again. All right, cool. And then, you know, 11,000, I mean, 1,109 times later, then you would have it all done because it always ends on the next line. But, and that's nice, but <laughs> you can do go even farther with this. So if I press right now, um, yeah, if I press a number before I do this, it'll execute whatever thing I wanted to execute that number of times. So just for the sake of the demo, we're going to do it 10 times. See that? 10. So uh, Alt X, get down to um, K macro call and hit enter. And it's going to execute this 10 different times. So it is doing all the things that are recorded and it's executing this on all of these right here. Um, sweet. <laughs> so let's go and double check to make sure I did it right. All right, no periods on the first line. All have verses. Hey, I mean that's that's fantastic. So I did this with um, the Web Bible. Uh, I did this for the uh, Web Bible and the King James version. And then after that, to make the org, or let's say I wanted to make this the um, uh, Markdown version, what I would do is instead of having it be an asterisk, I would have it be a hashtag symbol or pound sign or yeah, whatever you want to use. And then I would change the uh, file extension to org to .md, which is the markdown extension. And I would do that by um, doing a simple search and replace. So what I did was, because I still really haven't found out how to search and replace across a bunch of different files. I'm sure I could look it up real quick and learn how to do it, but this is how I did it. I went, I put them all these files inside of like, I think Adam, yeah, Adam, text editor and just did a search and replace across all files. I replaced all my asterisks with the hashtag symbol, and then I just renamed all the .orgs to 
uh, .md. And then that was it. I had my uh, markdown version. So I did that. But I've already done this, so you can already check out my GitHub page to show you how to do it. I hope this video has been informed, uh, informing for you. And maybe, maybe if you've got some sort of project that you've been putting off because you don't want to do a lot of work, there's probably some way to do it inside of uh, Emacs or a, uh, maybe even Vim, and it'll save you countless hours of work by doing all the hard work for you. I mean, this is really why computers are awesome, is that they do those things that we could do, but they do it much faster and um, makes it work really well. I'm going to do another video on how I study the Bible in this way. But for right now, this is how I've created uh, an Emacs uh, Bible with using K-Macro and Ranger as far as uh, how, how I did it in evil mode. Those are the big ones that I used to make this work. I hope you enjoy this video. If you want more videos on studying the Bible or using text editors, um, you can follow me here and I'll be uh, very grateful for your follow. See you guys in the next video.